Hi. How are you doing? Welcome back. My name is Alex. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today is Thursday, August 4, 2022. And continuing with the series on Reddit's advice, we're going to go to find a path. Find a path. The reason I'm showing myself locating these subreddits is because I actually have a short list, a, a small list of sorts of uh, potentially good subreddits. I mean, there are a ton of really helpful and useful subreddits out there. Uh, but as far as they relate to, you know, potentially recruiting, like recruitable posts of individuals who are seeking advice, who are stuck somewhere in corporate or in life, uh, I think that the subreddits that I've identified are, uh, they, they lend themselves to use for this type of content. So that's what I'm going to use them for uh, over the course of this podcast. Granted, uh, <clears throat> we want to set the timer on this. It's uh, we would like it to have it be under 30 minutes because I'm going to treat this as if it were an actual consult. So uh, without further ado, let me add 30 minutes onto the clock here because that's free. This is free advice coming from a corporate cowboy who has life experience, academic experience, career experience, right? So if uh, if, if you need to reach out to us personally, by all means, do that. You can email us. You can visit the website. Shoot us some mail at P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. That's actually right on the outskirts of uh, the capital in California. So it's collected and it's forwarded, all that good stuff. It'll reach us, no doubt. So looking for some posts, some hot posts. Let's go. Let's go to new ones, ones that don't have too many uh, too many comments on them. And one here says, "I'll be extremely late in graduating. What should I do?" Nah. Continuing real quick, career advice path for a sociology major. Okay, this was posted about an hour ago. Has no comments on it. And what do you know? I actually majored in sociology. I myself, Alex, actually majored in sociology before going to law school, and uh, in in you know in pursuit of my career, I took sociology honestly, honestly because I'd taken some time off after high school to do a little work, you know, make my bones in corporate, and then I returned to school and discovered that <laughs> sociology was the easiest shit to get through. In my experience, the easiest shit to get through. I already was a rather social person and I had made connections previously in my life between myself and people and organizations, but it wasn't until I actually entered uh, or re-entered school because, you know, I, 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 I caught a couple uh, I caught a couple cases. I did a little dirt and all that. So re-entering into school, uh, I found that sociology actually hit the nail right on the head for providing me with terms for concepts that I otherwise would not have known about. So, I mean, it, it put my, uh, it, it definitely honed my knowledge and expertise to a more academic degree, pun intended. So they're asking here, so I'm 27, female, going into my second year of sociology this fall and just don't know what paths are open for me after that. I have a lot of admin experience and like admin focused work, but I also have interests in business and operations, writing, marketing, and social media slash soft technologies. I guess. They say I guess, which tells me that they don't. I'm certain I don't want to teach. It's just not for me. I was considering things as broad as urban planning to healthcare administration, but I just don't know what to swing for, especially with the way things are right now. For context, I live in Toronto, if that helps. Any thoughts are welcome. I just never had a, quote, 
dream as a child about what professional path I wanted to take, but I love learning, hence my major. I mean, that major isn't so much a love for learning. If you love learning, you wouldn't even have had to gone to, uh, to college, to university. But <clears throat> just right off the bat, just right off top, if you love learning and you're in your second year of sociology, I would venture to guess that in your second year of sociology, I don't know what it's like in Toronto, right? But in the U.S., in the United States, by your second year, you have satisfied a lot of uh, general education classes, which, for the most part, are just shit. It, it's just it's just perfunctory coursework that you have to get through. They're required. It's required coursework for you to have to graduate, for you to have to, for you to graduate from university. It doesn't actually edify you or or enrich your career in the sense that you think it might. It really is just there as a prerequisite for, uh, I want to say for contractual purposes, because otherwise uh, the university might lapse as far, might, might, uh, might fall short of governmental regulations on what a student is supposed to leave the education, the educational institution having known. Right, it's it's just another form of public education, unless you're going to like a private academy where you can, for sure, choose what it is that you want to learn. If you're at a public institution, you're you're necessarily getting institutionalized, and that's gonna be through general these quote unquote general education courses. Now, if you had a love for learning, I would venture to guess that by your second year of sociology, you have acquired enough skill, at least to research on your own, some research skill, especially in sociology. There are a lot of ways to research and, and uh, keep up with your learning. And you can learn a multitude of different things. You could learn about business and operations, about writing and marketing and social media and soft tech, I guess. If you have uh, the admin experience and you like the admin focused work, if you like those, the experience and the work that comes with it and the experience in turn that you gain from it, then pursue that. Go for that. Hone your curriculum and maybe I was lucky because at the at the institution that I was at, uh, it was actually... An, should I? In California. It was a, it was a University of California. Um, it was at a UC, yes. It was, a, it was a, like one, of, one of the highest research universities in California, if not the United States. But I was able to structure the particular emphasis of my degree, like what the emphasis that my degree would take on. So there are many emphases Within sociology, you have uh, social work, you have uh, pre-law, you have public policy administration, and you have public health, that sort of thing. And that's probably why uh, they're considering things like urban planning and healthcare administration, because those are somewhat folded into sociology in the broader sense, in the broader sense. Now, the particular emphasis that I took on was organizational studies. And the reason I took organizational studies for was because me personally, I actually like turning, uh, I'm not turning things on its head. <laughs> I actually like introducing a bit of subjectivity to the objectivity and objectivity to the subjectivity. To me, sociology is subjective as all heck, right? organizations, not so much. The people within organizations, very subjective. But organizations in and of themselves, especially when they are put down on paper, you've got rules and regulations and policies and practice that that you adhere to. That's more objective in that sense. That's way less flexible than, I don't know, the definition of truth. What is the truth? What is your truth? Or, or uh, the the 
relativity, like uh, moral relativism or ethnocentricity, uh, you know, really, really subjective aspects of sociology. <coughs> so what organizational studies allowed me to do was to combine, was to meld the objectivity that takes place in society via its groups of people and its organizations, its formal organizations like academic institutions, like the institution of the family, which is predicated on a social contract of sorts, right? Like government itself as an institution, like corporations as institutions in and of themselves, right? Because they have a hierarchical system and a hierarchical organization that requires the type of objectivity, a rigid objectivity, otherwise they fall apart, right? I gotta stop saying right. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise they fall apart. I was able to pursue courses in that vein and be able to combine them with concepts and vocabulary that I had picked up through my sociological classes, employing that quote-unquote sociological perspective, the sociological framework that is the human condition. And in that way, I mean, it, it wasn't so much that, that oh, I became uh, uh, outright conflict inter interactionist and a uh, conflict interactionalist and, and I became a Marxist and I'm, you know, I'm a diehard socialist and all this other bullshit. No, no, not at all. It's that I understood. I, I was able to better understand what I had already known before I even came in to school because I came into school with life experience already. I seen the streets, I seen corporate, I rubbed elbows with a lot of heavy cats. And having entered college and university, I was able to put those feelings, those ideas, those concepts, those dreams and ambitions into actual words. And then from words, turn them back into, you know, tangible product, which is now how I have degrees. I have degrees to show for it. I, I got a profile. I got, you know, a, a curriculum vitae, my resume and all. So now I've got the experience and can create value as if out of thin air. I don't just add value. That's a large miscon misconception of what sociology does. Sociology claims to add value to the human experience. And simply adding value is the equivalent of a corporation, uh, of just corporate arbitrage, really, just buying low and selling high. And and claiming to have added value. No, you're, you're not adding, I mean, and claiming to have added value in the sense that they are creating something better, that they are creating a better system. But just because a, an, an item, a product passes through your hands, just because an item or product passes through your hands and you tax the next motherfucker, doesn't mean you created any additional value. It doesn't make that item any more valuable than if that end consumer had just cut you out as the fucking middleman and gone straight to the source. You're just getting in the way of business and you're adding cost is what you're doing. <laughs> now, as far as continuing in a, sociolo in a sociology major, you want to be sure that the degree you acquire becomes marketable and it's going to be marketable within business operations in, in copywriting and marketing and uh, in, in that admin space, in that admin space. So long, so long as you continue to take courses that edify you in those areas. But sociology is so watered down, it's so diluted now and it's steeped in SJW-isms that finding finding a course that doesn't end with <clears throat> that doesn't end with literally that doesn't end with and race or and gender or and and theory it's, it's finding a course that doesn't end with those are are becoming rarer and rarer 
are becoming more rare. How about that? Are becoming more rare because rarer, I, I feel like rarer might be one of those words where it's best to say more rare instead of rarer. Rarer. <laughs> where those courses are becoming more and more rare, which is why I went with the organizational studies because within that specific emphasis of sociology, I was able to pick courses outside of just what was the siloed, how do I explain it? Which was just the initially outlined courses required for sociology. As a sociology major in organizational studies, I actually was able to take uh, economic classes, organizational management classes. I was actually able to rub elbows with business students and business professors. I was able to get to know them better. And the material that was imparted, the knowledge that was imparted, I was actually able to take and not so much overlap with my other sociology classes because because there were instances having attended school in a blue state there were instances where i attempted to introduce outside ideas right ideas from real life and reality into a class that was heavily theory laden right just fucking heavy theory and essentially challenging this this theory, this life work, this dissertation of this PhD professor and putting them on edge, putting them on their toes. And I've been shut down once or twice where I have a legitimate question I bring up to my professor and my professor who I won't name or gender or stereotype, they come back at me with the most confusing PhD vocabulary just to essentially quote unquote doctor me doctor me out of the office or, or, or doctor me around the question. So they have a way of speaking at that point when, I mean, when, I mean, when you're at that level of being a peer-reviewed elite scholar, academic scholar, you have a vocabulary, which is essentially defending your, your dissertation, defending your, your research. That's what you go through after you've managed to uh, finish your master's, your, your graduate program, and you pursue a PhD, or if you jump from a bachelor's and, and you and you go straight through a master's into a PhD, you you will have to sit down and defend your dissertation, which is which will be tantamount to your life's work. So of course, I mean, I, I in retrospect, I definitely do I recognize the position that I put these professors in because if I were in their shoes and some young punk, I mean, I don't want to, you know, down talk myself, but some motherfucker just walks into my office or walks into my classroom and I always sat in the back because I'm a fucking cool kid. I'm either taking notes or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm plotting on my next move. <laughs> I'm in the back of class and, I, and I, I'm thinking I'm come up, I come up with a question and I ask the professor a sincere question something that challenges the theory that's being, you know, distributed in class. A theory that has been empirically disproven. And yet, the theory, I don't know, let's say socialism doesn't lead to starvation and death. And I'm trying to I'm trying to question as to whether or not the precursors, maybe maybe it's the precursors for socialism and then it's the human involvement. Maybe it's 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 the human intervention that mechanizes those precursors, that actualizes those precursors into something operational that creates starvation and death. Maybe those precursors ought to be addressed. And no, instead of addressing the precursors, they they want to drag me through fucking socialism. So they're going to include vocabulary from like from Marx without having a, completely read it and understood it. That they're just going to start cherry picking, cherry picking words out of theories and authors and, and other scholars and, and institutional research journals and, and just to have me shut the fuck up and sit down, right? Because I'm in their ball field and I get it. I get it. All that to say is that while you are 27 and female going into your second year of sociology, it's don't give up. Don't give up and don't be watered down. Don't have your ambitions. I know you claim to never have had dreams, but you have interests. You have interests. And whether or not 
any dream that you had as a child connects as a corollary matter to the interests you have now, the fact that you have adamant experience and you actually like that work, there is a way, there is a way for you to pursue those interests in a dream I'm not going to say in a dream-like fashion, right? But it would be equivalent. It would be similar as if to fulfilling some childhood dreams. And that would be going to work, doing what you like, and getting paid what you like, right? So don't think that the university is the end-all, be-all, right? If you have options now to get in touch with your university, with an academic advisor. And I know at times advisors and counselors may not be your cup of tea or may be giving you too much at a time. Even a person in my position where you're not asking for this advice, but it's free. Do with it what you want. Me, personally, I'm not 27. I'm not female. But in that position... I would go to an academic advisor, which is, you know, an agent of of the university, and get in touch with them and find what options there exist within the sociology major for you to improve, for you to develop, for you to continue exploring business and operations, writing, marketing, social media, and soft tech, I guess. Now, there are no comments on this one to date. I mean, if I refresh that real quick, I don't think there, I, there may not be any. This is only an hour old. And this is typically how I like them because then I could just come off the top of the dome. Uh, and, and there are other videos where I go into the comment section. I read a couple of comments and I, and I myself give an opinion on what, those, on what those comments are trying to advise our uh, original poster, our OP here. But uh, in this case, I feel that I feel that because the original poster didn't give, I mean, provided enough detail, enough factual detail for us to give a good opinion. I think that because they are still in school and 27, they may or may not be working. They, they don't state if they're currently working right now or if they're working somewhere. Maybe they're working on campus, right? And, uh, and, and maybe they're actively working on maybe they're actively gaining that admin experience on campus so they're doing something they like maybe they could roll that into something uh, maybe they could roll that up into something career like in the future but again without additional information and and this might be asked this would more than likely be asked in a consultation setting i would want to know what they are doing besides school, and if it's only school that they're doing, then they want to take full advantage, full advantage of the time that they have at school because that school, to me, was a vacation, a vacation away from work. It was a fucking sandbox. It was a fucking sandbox just to get my kicks. Uh, I mean, I studied a fuck ton, but I got to meet a lot of cool people. I wasn't a party goer. I wasn't a party goer. There are a, a lot of people, male and female, who just go to who go to university, three, four years, and uh, and party every weekend or on Tinder every weeknight, and and then bitch and cry about not being able to uh, to fulfill the expectations, easy expectations too, of a sociology class, and uh, and then I you know. I, I'm just left to laugh at them at the end. But it is what it is. If you like this kind of content, don't hesitate. Like, comment, and subscribe. It. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the bell. All that. You can pass it on to a friend. Maybe you have a friend who's going into a soft science major. And if I could cut uh, this video, this consultation, into a uh, too long didn't read or a too long didn't watch, here at the very end, I would say, be sure, be sure, before you even go to fucking university, if you are considering a soft science major, understand, understand what makes your soft science major marketable. And you ought to know, you have already had 
have to add research. <laughs> you already ought to have researched whether or not your degree is marketable and how you would do it. How you would do it. Because if you have to hit Reddit up and ask Reddit, what can I do with my soft science major? It, it doesn't, it, this post here doesn't give off social justice vibes, right? Otherwise, I mean, a, a lot of corporations are picking up social justice majors just for clout. I mean, you, you could definitely do that. They sound like they have interest in business and operations. Shit, I might say, consider, consider, ooh, consider being an independent contractor, like an, a, a form of, of a form of outsourceable HR for not startups, maybe mid-sized, and and undercut what they have in-house. Mm? You could be outsourced HR. How about that? And uh, undercut undercut the folks that they have in-house. Yes, you would be essentially competing with those folks that are in-house, but you as a younger person, if you have that kind of digital technology savvy, right? You have you have um you have an interest in business operations and all, you could go the HR route, get paid very well and be handling little to no complaints depending on how you advise your own clients. You see, I'm trying to create uh, corporate cowboys in that sense. I'm trying to create individuals who are self-sustaining and are capable of creating work for themselves and in that sense, creating value, not just adding value, quote unquote. Because I mean, yeah, you could get a sociology major and you've quote unquote added value to your life. But if you're sitting on debt, if you're sitting on student debt, you've added negative value. You haven't created dick. So, you know, just be wary of that. I'm going to cut this consultation short. We've got about three minutes left. If you have any comments or would like to follow up, I mean, you know, jump on Reddit. I'll be uh, surfing a couple of, uh, a couple of, I think, uh, very suitable, very appropriate subreddits, and uh, the series will be ongoing, and that's why I'm keeping it to this type of setting, 30 minutes or less, 30 minutes or less. So if you want, you can subscribe to our Patreon, become a patron. There are multiple tiers. If you want to donate directly, there is a link tree somewhere. I mean, it's got our PayPal, our Venmo, our Cash App, all dollars collected, all dollars donated go towards business fees and, uh, and, and legal expenses. Business expenses and legal fees, essentially, keeping this operation non-for-profit. And obviously, it goes to uh, office hardware and uh, functional paperweights. You know the deal. <laughs> Have yourself a nice day. I'll talk to you soon.